listen to her carefully so madam welcome to this online classroom yes thank and, you sir uh, you know, we request you to kindly start your presentation from okay, your okay sir you need it okay thank you very much please stay for okay okay sir good morning students and today is the last uh, block we have to discuss and that is block 4 and already you know i think you must i hope you all of you have gone through of your study material this block 4 then you must know that this block 4 is nothing about the teaching learning strategy in geography and economics and if you will think uh, already we have discussed regarding the teaching learning process and learning materials what uh, what are there in geography and economics in block 2 also so most of the things of the block 2 is again repeated here but the thing is that here the more emphasis is given how we can go the depth of the content and how we can prepare the lesson plan on the basis of by keeping in view the learning objectives and uh, different learning activities and assessment questions so on the basis of it this block 4 has given emphasis okay so block 4 is nothing else about geography and economics content and as a teacher how you can prepare before going to teach any geography and economic content learning objectives and learning activities and uh, assessment questions okay so the thing is that we have to again repeat here some of the things what we have already discussed in block 2 when we are discussing about teaching learning strategy in geography and economics okay so i think all of you have uh, just remember that we ha we have discussed in uh, block 2 the different learning strategies mostly used for presenting geography and economics so first we will start from there and we know uh, geography is a science subject it is not only arts it is also a science subject in many of the board in many of the state the that is also included in the science stream so it is a option for both the science student and the arts students they can opt for the geography and that's why geography whenever we are talking regarding the teaching of geography most of the scientific approaches are used for teaching geography okay and we, uh, mostly if you will say the demonstration approach and we can say demonstration method and we can say the direct observation method indirect observation method experimental method so these all are the most popularly used methods for teaching geography okay and here in this uh, block uh, your unit 14 to up to unit 17 is there 14 15 16 17 18 and unit 14 and 15 is about geographic contents if you have gone for this uh, unit 14 and 15 you will see the geography indian geography is mentioned here uh, mostly which is going to teach at the secondary level it means these are the content which is given in your block is mostly is going to taught at the secondary level to the 9th and 10th students and as yesterday also i emphasized that for being a effective teacher first thing is that a teacher must have the good content knowledge or depth knowledge in the content suppose you are a geography teacher definitely you must have the good content knowledge regarding the old geography and indian geography and many of the geography concepts and already i told to you geography concepts are nearly related related to physical science concepts also because you will see the earth and atmosphere and the different type of soils and all these things are already is going to be taught in the science also at the secondary level so definitely as a geography teacher is is the uh, there is a challenge how we can get over all the hard spots and the contents so that effectively we can teach in the class so the first of all little bit we will discuss regarding this unit geography contents whatever is given in your uh, um, metric study material so this is the unit 14 is regarding the geographic geographical features of india how what is india and what is the geographical location of india and you all of you i think know that india is the uh, la seventh largest country in area and also the highly populated second populated country in the world okay and the geographical location is totally located in the northern hemisphere and 
it is located between 80 degree latitude to up to 32 degree latitude in the earth surface so these are the few informations has given regarding the location of india in your uh, uh, in our earth okay and next how it is how india is going to and uh, how india is going to surround it because we know india is such a geographical india is located in a such a geographical place where everything i already told you all type of diversity of geographical features are available in india india is such a country where islands are there peninsula is there plateau is there plain is there forest is there largest mountain is there desert is there so all type of geographical features are there in india and we are located in such a geographical location okay so we can say india india again the from northern side up to north to up from kashmir to up to kanyakumari to up to the southern india southern side it is called as the indian peninsula and the northern side india is bounded by the himalayan mountains and all these things and how the uh, two largest plateaus is located in india as like the deccan plateau and the malwa plateau and how the coastal lines two coastal lines western and eastern eastern coastal lines uh, is the having the largest coastal boundary okay and like that all the geographical features are located in your unit 14 about all these things the purpose of telling all these things or mention to all these things is that if as a teacher you are not having the in depth knowledge regarding all these concepts definitely you will not feel confident in the class so for that purpose before going to teach regarding india first of all as a geography teacher you have each and every information and understanding about india okay so for that purpose you as a teacher has to go in depth in the content then only you can plan what should be my learning objective when i am going to teach regarding physical features in india in the class okay so what should be the learning objectives what should be my learning activities if without having depth content knowledge we cannot plan the good learning activities for our presentation okay we cannot plan the qualitative question for assessment okay and uh, without having depth knowledge you will not first of all the thing is that if we have no depth knowledge as a teacher you can identify that you are not confident to teach the concept okay so in that knowledge regarding the content is the first essential thing which is highlighted okay in in our teaching profession so before going to be a professional teacher in a particular subject first of all as a teacher we should give emphasis what is my in that knowledge in that content so that only you can be effective okay so here geography and economic contents are first of all must essential you must get the in depth knowledge before going to be a professional social studies teacher so here the content has given as i am i if you will go through your material you can understand but i don't try to emphasize on each and every content because we can't because in within the time limit we cannot give emphasis but here in your material is very nice material and each and everything is mentioned in very specifically so definitely if you will focus on that definitely you can able to understand only for example they have given few contents for you in the uh, material but you can feel that as to for before going to the class into what extent we can prepare ourselves to what extent i can prepare my content knowledge okay so that is the examples are given in your study material so how it is presented in your study material definitely it is a very good scope to all of you to know about it so uh, you can know that what are the whenever in a particular topic i am going to teach what are the different criteria are there or what are the different sub concepts are there on which i can give emphasis on it okay so here they have given importance regarding the climate suppose indian physical features means not only indians boundary line and the location of india the monsoon climate what is the climate condition of india and what are the resources are available in india how we can take the best use of the resources in india and how our economic condition is influenced by geographical condition how our living style in india in most of the part 
is influenced by our geographical condition everything if we know that economic condition political condition and social condition each and everything is influenced by the physical location okay so these all the things also mentioned in your material very minute and very elaborate okay so you should uh, after going through it you can get the idea so any content if i have to learn my textbook is not the sufficient no, sufficient for me to get the in depth knowledge okay no doubt for the class 9 geography there is a geography book but for teaching in class 9 if you will read only the class 9 textbook so definitely it will not be sufficient for you to get the confidence in the class so for teaching in 9th class you have to go through the other supplementary materials in geography suppose you can go through the other higher classes textbooks or any supplementary books are available in geography or the atlas and also the different other um, workbooks so that it will give confidence to you what type of questions i can ask at the time of teaching what should be my formative questions how after teaching a content i can um, plan for some activity okay in geography so each and everything is depend on your in depth knowledge in the particular content okay so i think uh, by telling all these things you must uh, realize that what is the importance of in depth knowledge in a content of a teacher okay and for this only i am i want to sensitize to all of you that so as you all are interested to be a teacher and you are there in the teaching profession so definitely you can realize that and you can self evaluate that what is my content knowledge and how i can improve my content knowledge so that i can be a confident teacher in my subject okay so that is only the main purpose to address all these things to you okay and now next we will come how if after having the in depth knowledge in the content that is also not sufficient no doubt it is required necessary it is a necessary condition but it is not the sufficient that if i have the in depth knowledge in my subject then i can be a effective teacher yes so i already told to you in depth knowledge is a necessary condition but not the sufficient condition to be a effective teacher so after having the in depth knowledge my responsibility is that i must see whether i have the mastery over the teaching skills i have the mastery over the teaching skills or i am able to whatever i know i am able to represent all those things according to the need of the students according to the need i am not telling that whatever you know you can present effectively so that it can be useful and um, it, it must be required by the students we must see what is the need of the students to whom i am going to teach what are the requirement of them so if you are able to meet the need of the students definitely you will be a effective teacher okay so for that purpose we have to think that what is my what what is my mastery what is my competency over the teaching skills whether i am able to write the learning objectives properly whether i am able to identify my learning objectives before going to the class okay like that whether i am able to prepare questions properly in my subject okay so that only you will your classroom will be effective and you will get the satisfaction as a effective teacher so yesterday i already highlighted all these things to you but again i want to repeat those things to you because these are the common whether it is history or political science geography or economics these here only the difference is there between yesterday's block three and block four is that only content content is different history there we give an emphasis on history and political science and today we are going to discuss everything those learning objectives those uh, learning activities and assessment questions we have to discuss from the geography and economic point of view otherwise same things are there and it is repeated from block 2 to block 3 and block 4 block 3 and block 4 is nothing else just the extension of block 2 block 2 overall the idea is given regarding the four aspects but again generally and specifically the generalization is there in block 3 regarding history and political science and block 4 is about geography and economics so yesterday already we have discussed but still today i want to just repeat all those things again regarding the micro skills 
and how uh, as a teacher you have mastery over those micro skills before going to be a teacher and i also today i prepared one of ppt um, on this micro skills just you have gone through it again we will just um, recapitulate all those things So yesterday, uh, we discussed about my now uh, PPT is visible to all of you. Yes, ma'am, it is visible. PPT is visible to all of you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So yesterday also I emphasized and I explained about all those things, and today I prepare one of the PPT regarding all those micro skills because these micro skills are very important uh, skills. to um, practice to be a professional teacher okay if we have the mastery over this micro skill then only you can be able to be a master to take a class in a particular subject okay so again today we will highlight all those things and those micro skills are uh, uh, first i already should have mentioned to you skill of introduction okay and skill of introduction yesterday i told to you why introduction is required in a subject why we want to introduce the lesson okay and introduction is must essential in every subject first of all we should not we should not declare as a teacher the topic to our students okay whether you are going to teach in a traditional method or you are going to teach in a constructivist approach first the teacher responsibility is that we should collect the name of our topic from from the students from the student side as a teacher first of all after going to the class we should not declare the topic today we are going to read about this subject this is we should not do like that okay and uh skill of introduction is a very important skill because all the other already i told to you that from the key Point of view, we are going to introduce a lesson that is to draw the attention of our students, whether our students are deep, deep in their mind or in their not only because sometimes we know only there is in somewhere our body will be present but mentally we will be absent. Okay, so in this situation, after mostly for the children also because we know children are very critical in mind. Okay. and it is not very easy to draw the attention of the student and they they and only by physically they will be in the classroom but their mind may be somewhere else so whatever we have prepared as a teacher if we are just without drawing the attention of the student without uh, drawing their concentration if we want to teach then definitely our teaching will not be effective and so for that purpose skill of introduction is must essential so in the skill of introduction we give importance to draw the attention of the students how all of my students in the class will listen to me what i am going to do or will be with me what i am going to do whatever i am going to tell they are going to listen or whatever i am going to do they will be with me so for that purpose skill of introduction is most essential that is one object okay then next before going to teach something as a teacher my first duty is to assess my level of the student where they are because students will not learn from the level of the teacher how qualified a teacher what is the level of the teacher whether a teacher has a high quality level not like that okay whatever may be if the teacher is not able to come to the level of the student or not students are not able to be with the teacher then also the teaching learning has no value or no use it will not be effective it will not be effective so for that purpose the teacher first of all has the proper understanding about the level of the student to whom the teacher is going to teach So for that purpose, you have to we have to test 
the business knowledge of our students that they know suppose here i i can give example that i am going to teach about india okay physical features of india but if i will start from my point of view i will go and i will declare the topic and i will tell students we are going to today learn about the physical features and i will start it is not the proper process of teaching so before going to teach regarding physical features of india i have to know that what is the knowledge of my students regarding india india physical features okay so for that purpose i may impose some questions to them like what is the name of our country definitely it is a very easy question they can tell because they know about it to which level we are going to teach on the basis of that we have to frame questions in they if they will give the answers india then you know where india is located yes definitely they can tell on the earth on the earth we are there in the planet earth okay any idea regarding the earth okay so um, um, they, they may tell that um, you have got any idea regarding latitude and longitude i think they must have idea regarding latitude and longitude in sixth class onwards so this topic we are going to teach in maybe in the ninth class or eighth class so definitely they can tell then can you know where in uh, uh, if you will see where is the location of india in the earth surface then they can tell that uh, yes it is located in the northern hemisphere okay or otherwise if they are unable to tell then you can tell that okay today we are going to discuss if they will tell the answer then it is good so that also continue otherwise if the students are not able to if the students are able to answer then also then also we uh, as a teacher you can say yes today we are going to learn more and more things regarding the physical features of india from that at that time we will introduce our lesson and our introduction will stop it so like this by imposing few questions we can introduce the lesson otherwise here again same thing we can do also in a different way suppose we want to teach about india i can take the india map and i can hang in the class and i will ask can you identify this is the map of which country or a, i can prepare a blank map okay only without a chart paper i can prepare the map of india without writing anything and i ask can you identify this is the map of which country yes if they can tell then it is india okay then you know what are these things so which this is which side this is which side and uh, because it is a map we can ask okay and you know where it is located and you know what is located in different sides of india from from that point of view also by showing a map and imposing some questions we can also introduce the lesson okay so otherwise by telling our uh, by doing an activity also we can do okay yes. so like that anything uh, the freedom is there with the teacher how to introduce for that any restriction is not there but we have to introduce the lesson without introduction we should not go for the presentation and as a teacher we must have mastery over the skill of introduction i should know how i can introduce the lesson and one thing is that when ever we are going to teach a subject teacher every time you should not use one one way only to introduce a lesson every time you will ask few questions and will introduce the lesson it may not be interesting for the students so you can go for the different option today i have done a one activity today i have uh, i show something uh, pictures and introduce the lesson today i just tell one story small story within 2 to 3 minutes and introduce the lesson okay a uh, few day i will just make a puzzle small puzzle and make the uh, introduction of the lesson so the different ways are there to introduce the lesson so as a teacher we should think about it before going to plan for a lesson how i will introduce my lesson so that it will be more interesting and students will be more motivated towards my classroom okay but introduction must always has to be done from the three point of view to draw the attention of the student to test the previous knowledge and to create more curiosity among the students okay you you should do the things in such a way that students must feel that today teacher is going to tell or today teacher is going to do something new for us so that it will be helpful for us and we will learn more things the more the students will be interested to learn the things so as a teacher your responsibility is also to 
create more and more curiosity. So you always should seek and do do the new thing, so that only they will be interested to learn the thing. Okay. So this is the skill of introduction. And as a teacher, we should plan and we should have mastery over it. Okay. So this is introduction, and next we will go skill of explanation with examples. You know, uh, we have divided the presentation of the lesson into three parts: introduction, presentation, and evaluation. And here, presentation, we are going to explain the things to our students and also to elaborate the things uh, to our students. Or we also expect that if the children should explain and elaborate, we should teach to them in such a way that they will able to explain and elaborate the things. So, for that purpose, there is need of Skill of explanation with examples because it is also a skill. Whenever you are going to explain something, if at that moment you are able to give appropriate examples, so definitely it will be easy for the students to learn and able to provide. Able to provide. appropriate example is also one of the important skill of a teacher okay because you know citing the proper example definitely depends on the experience of the teacher you will see highly experienced teacher for everything they can cite example so it depends on the experience and in depth knowledge of the content of the teacher who will able to give the appropriate example okay and we know if we will teach by giving appropriate example Definitely, our teaching learning process will be more easier, and it will be healthy for the students to understand it clearly. Okay, so it is also a skill. When I am planning that my content and subcontent in the presentation, I should think of how I can explain all those things by giving appropriate examples. Okay, I should practice for that. Okay, any subject, whether it may be geography or economics or any other subject. Always, we should think for more and more examples. Okay, support. I am talk. I am just discussing about uh, in uh, uh, in suppose we will take this topic only. Suppose I have, we have taken the physical features of India, and at that time we are going to teach uh, the different physical forms. And at that time we can say whatever um, the suppose we are teaching the physical features. What is there in India? I am. I am talking about plateau. So all of a sudden, I must be able to give the examples. What are the plateaus are there? What plateaus are there in India? Or I, at the time also, you can interlink it to the plateaus of the other countries also, so that they can able to understand. Or at the same time, you will able to locate all those things in the India map. Suppose I am talking about the Deccan plateau, which is located in the southern central part of the India, and I must be able to locate it. Where is Deccan plateau? Is there? Or I am talking about Malwa Plateau. I should be able to locate it where the Malwa Plateau is there. And like like this, if only I will tell and without giving a citing an example. Suppose I am talking about Himalayan mountains, and at that time both the maps are there. A world map is there with me, and also India map is there with me. I am talking about Himalayan mountains, mountain range, and at that time I am able to show the other mountain range. Or which are there also in other countries like Al, or we can say the Andes mountain in um, South America, like that. If I am able to give examples and also appropriate, parallelly I am able to show the other things, then definitely it will clear understanding in the mind of the children. Okay, so citing examples and um, we make the understanding of the children more clear. Okay. If any anything, suppose you are teaching any topic, not only we are talking to you, here we are talking regarding geography, but not like that. These all are the skills for the all subjects. Okay, so this is the skill of examples. Okay, next we will go to skill of questioning. Uh, yesterday I told to you um, that skill of questioning. Questioning is not a very easy task. It is also very difficult to prepare the question, and we have to prepare always the question. From the student's point of view, not from the teacher's point of view. What I know on the basis of it, we should not ask the question. Questioning are also different types of this. At the time of preparing a lesson plan, we are preparing question for introduction stage. 
we are preparing question at the time of our presentation the formative question and also we are preparing question at our evaluation part okay uh, we ask question in introduction part we ask question simultaneously when we are presenting our topic we are asking questions and proceeding and at the end of the lesson also we are asking question and we are preparing many question paper and many teacher made question papers are there to evaluate our students formative test unit test what we are going to call unit test it is a teacher made test a subject teacher has to prepare the question on the basis of the blueprint okay prepare so skill of questioning the preparation of the question is definitely a high level task for a teacher and a teacher must have mastery over it so how we can prepare the question and for that purpose also today i have prepared one slide to show you how we can prepare the questions i will just i will show to you yes are you able to see the ppt are you able to see the ppt yes ma'am yes ma'am yes the uh, this slide is uh, this slide yes ma'am ma'am ppt is clearly visible okay 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 thank you ha uh, so no, this no. is ppt is visible madam there is no problem Okay, and type. Uh, this is about uh, uh, the slide is about types of questions. What are the different types of questions? Mostly we ask and also mostly we prepare on the basis of which. Okay, one thing is that question can be open-ended and question can be closed-ended. Okay, so open-ended. What is open-ended question? What is closed-ended question? Uh, open-ended question means the question uh, which are not having the specific answers. more than one answers are available for a question then we can say it is a open ended question okay but if specific answers are there for a question then it is called as the closed ended question okay like that on the length of the question what should be the length of the answer of the question the question can be long question short question and very short question and you all know about all these things because we have gone through many examinations in our life and we have attended many questions in the examination and we know about it what is a very short question which are um, pinpointed answer specific answer is there whether it can be the fill in the blanks question or it can be make the following questions or it can be correct the underlying words like that so multiple choice question so those are the very short question like that short question which answer can be presented within one or two sentences or uh, mostly the marks to marks and three marks are allotted for that those are called as the short answer question okay like length long questions which are most where we have given importance on uh, description and uh, described answer and we give we mostly give importance on explanation um on uh, explanation uh, ability of a child okay so those questions are called as the long questions okay and we yesterday i told to you when we prepare the specific objectives at that time we mostly prepare specific objectives on the basis of the domain so that when we will evaluate we have to also prepare the questions based on those domain like knowledge based question understanding based question skill based question and application based question just i will give one example to you so that you can understand it easily Suppose I will ask you, uh, what is, uh, where is the capital of India? Okay, uh, definitely one can tell Delhi is the capital of India. So here, this question can be called as a knowledge level question because for this knowledge of understanding, a child simply can remember it. Delhi is the capital of India. Okay, but suppose um, I will ask, uh, just I will ask a sing single question: Where India is located? India is located. Where India is located, and option is given the northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, or western hemisphere, or eastern hemisphere. So definitely, the um, child can remember it only by knowledge. In, in terms of the knowledge, the child can remember and can tell India is located in the northern hemisphere. But for this, there need no need of understanding is that the purpose is that knowledge based question. Just for the memory, we can remember the knowledge, but for the no understanding is required. But we know if with understanding it, you will remember anything. It will be in a long term memory. Okay, again it is there. Now every uh, knowledge level question is not required understanding. We can't tell also like that. 
if uh, uh, knowledge here questions also bit understanding we remember it, it will be in our long term memory otherwise the things only what we remember only for in the sake of remembering then it is be there in our short term memory mostly what the students will do before the examination the night they will study and we write in the examination the next day they will forget and those all are the short term memories and they it will not be helpful for them to acquire knowledge that is not called the real knowledge okay so before going to plan the question we should by by uh, seeing the question we must identify what level of question it is whether it is a knowledge level question or it is a understanding level question or it can suppose understanding level question yesterday also i explained to you uh, how at the time of writing the learning objectives by seeing the action word or the action verb we can identify whether it is a uh, understanding level objective or skill level objective or a application level objective Suppose here I can give just differentiate between plane and flat tube. I will ask the students differentiate between a plane and flat tube. Definitely, it is a understanding level question because without understanding, a child cannot differentiate what is flat tube and what is plane. Okay, so it is a understanding level question. Like elaborate, uh, elaborate about something. It is also we can say it is a understanding level question. But just I will tell define what is flat tube. definitely the child will just remember the sentence and can write and it is a knowledge level question define the question is if it is define what is left you define the left you then definitely it will be a knowledge level question okay but elaborate about the left you it is can be called as a understanding level question so by seeing the question and um, by seeing the action word for what action for which purpose we have given the question from that we can identify whether it is a knowledge based question or understanding based question like this i am just giving example about the skill based question suppose i will tell to draw the outline map of india it is a skill level question to draw the outline map of india so it it will be a skill level question or we can say uh to draw uh, um the lat latitudes and longitudes Uh, of on the earth, of the earth. So it can be also a skill level question. Okay, but suppose instead of that, I can tell, identify uh, a different place you in India map. It can be application level question. Okay, identify. So identify means suppose what the knowledge the child has get whether practically is able to apply it or not. Okay. And if for application, definitely knowledge and understanding must have to be there. The child must have knowledge about it and must have to understand it. But we we can say that without having knowledge and understanding, application is not possible. But we can also tell that only if knowledge and application is uh, understanding is there, every child cannot apply it. Okay, every child's application skill will not be there. Okay, and for application, it is required more practice. And more depth understanding, then only all the analyzing skill of the child. The child must be able to analyze the things, able to synthesize the things, must have the creative thinking, so that only application can be easily happen for a child. Okay, application is a higher level thing, which is not possible at the for the beginner. Okay, so for for getting application, we if we want to get the um to develop the application of a child, then definitely. we have to first give importance on knowledge and understanding then only application can be possible okay so these are the different uh, domains or or we can say the different levels on the basis of which we we are going to prepare the question so this this is the skill of questioning if you have asked how it is difficult to prepare the question so just you now think whether it is easy to prepare the question by taking into these many considerations definitely not it will be you have to think about it and you have to give the time for it preparation of the question require more time by a teacher if you want to prepare a qualitative question only by picking the question from a uh, question bank or you will take few questions in uh, from the end of your textbook then definitely it will be easy but really if you want to prepare by keeping all this dimension in your mind it will be take a lot of time to prepare a question So definitely, it is a the typical task, a typical skill for a teacher to get mastery over the preparation of the skill.
and next next yesterday also we discuss we will go back okay we are discussing about this case uh micro skills and we we are discussing about skill of questioning not next we will come to skill of preparation of the teaching aid yes it also we discussed about it again today i want to tell more specific things regarding the preparation of the teaching aid how teaching aid we can prepare and how we will get mastery over the skill first of all thing is that before going to prepare the teaching aid three things we have to keep in mind one thing is that whether the teaching aid is relevant to the topic or not sometimes what are said only in the sake of preparing a teaching aid we prepare a teaching aid but that is in that has no relation to my topic and to my content only i have to take a teaching learning material to the class if for that purpose i have prepared a teaching aid it has no value because it will not helpful for me and also in for for my explanation or it will not help you for the students for their understanding okay so purpose of taking teaching a to the class is that which will help the teacher uh, in the teaching learning process and also which will help to the students to understand it easily for that purpose we are using the teaching learning materials in the class okay if these two objectives are not fulfilled then there is no use of using a teaching aid in the class okay. so that thing we have to keep in mind whatever the teaching aid i am thinking to prepare and to take to the class whether it is relevant to my topic whether it is really uh, related to my topic yes if it is yes then i will go for the preparing a teaching aid okay and if uh, that is your decided then next is that what is the age level of my child how the teaching aid i will be prepare whether it will be make their understanding clear or not sometimes what i can be prepare the teaching aid in such a way by telling the child can understand it easily but after using the teaching aid it become more complicated for the child the child get confused why only if you will explain it verbally the child can understand it easily But you have taken a teaching aid by preparing in such a way that by seeing that it become complex for the child to understand it. See, some it it happens sometimes because if I have prepared a piece, suppose I want to show something regarding um, um, Indian physical pictures, but I have prepared the picture in such a way it is getting confused because I didn't paint the uh, proper symbols. Suppose I want to prepare a statue and plane and all those things. But I I didn't take we know that plateau means little brown color we should use and plain means uh, um, plain areas how it will be located we have to identify that and how the mountains can be but for that purpose I have prepared something in such a way that it get confused for the child to know about it so definitely the purpose of preparing teaching aid just to simplify the understanding of the children not to make their understanding more complex if in that way we are not able to prepare the teaching aid. then the teaching aid has no value so we should think that we should prepare the teaching aid in such a way it will help the students for clear understanding not to make their understanding more complicated okay so that thing we have to keep in mind okay yeah? whether i have mastery over of preparing a teaching aid or not i have to prepare it perfectly and i have to keep the psychology and age level of the student what color i have to use and what is the size of my classroom whether it will be visible to all students or not if i am going to prepare a model if i have prepared a static model then it's okay but i am going to prepare a working model then i am able to handle it properly in my class all these things i have to keep in mind okay so these are the things we have to keep in mind before going to prepare a teaching aid so definitely regarding this a teacher has mastery over it otherwise it is not easy to prepare a teaching aid okay yeah? and that's why it is called as a very important skill for a teacher how to prepare a teaching aid the next we will come to skill of using blackboard yes using blackboard is also a very important skill if we are able to properly use the blackboard then there is no need of teaching aid also sometimes we can tell because blackboard is a very good teaching aid for every teacher okay blackboard is a very good teaching aid for every teacher 
everything we can do in that okay but we must know the proper and appropriate and systematic use of the blackboard okay so i am going to teach in the board and first of all the things is the one of the we are going to take the use of the board we should not use it haphazardly we should write everything very systematically suppose i am going to teach his uh, geography and i am using the board maybe i divide the board in two ways in one side i am going to write the theoretical part whatever the thing i am going to write and in the same time in the other part i am able to draw in my hand hand drawing just the raw form um, hand drawing we can do on the blackboard even though as a teacher you are not good in drawing also just for the clear understanding of the children we can do I, and i can specify a particular part of my board for that okay i can draw the things draw the things in the under particular part i can divide the board into different parts in one part i can use for the theory in other part i can use um, for the drawing and suppose at the time of teaching uh, geography we social science is a subject so we have to interlink it with other subjects so i can allotted a, another part of my board so that is any extra things or any thing from outside of my content or outside of my textbook for the sake of the general knowledge of the students i'm going to teach i may write those things in that part of the board so as a teacher or uh, i must know how effectively i can take the use of my board so that it will be more understandable by my children Okay. By seeing the board only, whenever you are going to present your topic, by seeing your board, one can identify how much you have prepared your lesson and what is your content knowledge is regarding that topic. Okay, so we can that much systematically can use our board so that it will be more helpful both for the teacher and for the students and for their understanding. Okay, so it is also and one more thing, whenever we are taking the use of the board. we should never back to our students always we should stand in a 90 degree angle near to the board so that to what extent my hand is going to reach i can write the sentence suppose a very big board is there no need to write a sentence from the starting of the board to end of the board i can divide the board so that my hand is going to to what extent i can write the sentence and after completion of the one part i can move to the another part of the board so i will never back to my students Okay. Or uh, sometimes we can uh, divide the board in such a way and can give a part of the board allotted for the students. We can ask our students to come near to the board and to do their work. So for that purpose, for a student's activity, we can allot a one part of our board. Okay. So these all are the skills. How we can take the use of our blackboard. So it is also very important skill a teacher has mastery over it and has to practice it. Okay, as a teacher, you have to practice. How I will take the use of my board? Okay, and yesterday we discussed a lot regarding the skill of reinforcement. And today I do not want to again stress it again. And gesture and posture also we have discussed. And next is the skill of evaluation. Now in the questioning, in terms of that we have discussed about it. And next we will come to skill of classroom management. And uh, um, classroom management definitely is also a skill. And with, by having all the master over all the skills, if I don't know how to manage my class, then definitely also you cannot be a effective teacher. So as a teacher, you must learn how to manage your class, and for that purpose, we have to give the importance and different dimensions, different dimensions like uh, um, how I will arrange my sitting arrangement in the class. As a teacher, you have the own uh, decision, or it is the the freedom has given to you how you can arrange your class how you can arrange your students whether you can arrange the students in group wise or how that will be the composition of the students in a group how you will choose the students to make a group okay and to whom you want to make in front and to whom you want to make in in the, in the back and that freedom is also there with the teacher you can make for the smooth functioning of your class or before going to classroom manage manage the class in appropriate way you should think whether it is good ventilated or not or it is lighted or not um uh, if it is not good ventilated and proper light is not there in the class also your class your uh, classroom teaching will not be effective so you have to give importance on all these things whether students are sitting comfortably or not 
Okay. And what are the group of the students you have chosen to do the group activity? And um, these all the dimension. These all the whether your blackboard is properly visible to the students or not. Okay. These things before going to start the class, you have to give importance on all these dimensions so that only you your classroom will be your teaching learning process will be easier and it will be. And um, you will able to lead the class. Otherwise, if these things are neglected from the start, from the beginning, then there will be interruption. Then you are teaching very um, seriously in the class, and some students are it is not visible to us, and they are disturbed. They are not getting proper ventilation. They are not getting air, and also it is not um, a convenient for them to sit in that bench and chair. Then definitely also classroom will not be effective. So these are the small things like. Uh, we have to give important summit so that only you can teach appropriately in your class. Okay, so these are called the skill of classroom management. So before going to effectively teach as a teacher, you have to get mastery over it and you have to give important summit. Okay, and next one thing yesterday I told to you regarding the learning objectives, and today I also have prepared one more slide regarding the how we can prepare the learning objectives. Skill of writing objectives. How we can write the objectives? Okay, because whatever whether it is geography or history or whatever may be the lesson, we have to first of all frame our learning objectives, and on the basis of learning objectives, we have to prepare the learning activities, and on the basis of the learning objectives, we have to prepare the assessment questions. Okay, so if our learning activities and assessment questions are based on learning objectives. So definitely, as a teacher, we have to give more importance for writing these learning objectives. So you first of all know that how I will write my learning objectives. Okay. So for that also, certain rules are there. How we can write our learning objectives? First of all, thing these learning objectives. I think you are may may be getting confused regarding the learning outcomes. Learning objectives and learning outcomes are no more difference is there. But one thing is that now learning outcomes allows what we are going to tell. We have just uh, differentiated some some few more things. Okay. So those differences are learning uh, objectives and learning outcomes. We know that learning objectives are also based on competency. Like that, learning outcomes are also based on competence. But before we used to tell learning outcomes is uh, sorry, learning objectives are only for the students. But now, when we are talking about learning outcomes, we are we are going to tell that those learning outcomes are all all the uh, stakeholders related to the field of education must aware about the learning outcomes. Because you know, after the 2017 NAS National Achievement Survey, we are going to give more importance on these learning outcomes. Which are we are going to write in terms of our behaviors, or it is in terms it is called as the ELOs. Okay, and these ELOs now all stakeholders about education must be aware about it. It means teacher must know what are the learning outcomes of a particular topic. Student must know what are the learning outcomes of a particular topic, and not only teacher and student, parents also must aware. After completion of this topic, what are the learning outcomes must be achieved by child, and other stakeholders. You can be the administrative officer or whoever may be related to the field of education. They must aware about it, so that our main objective is achievement of learning outcomes. Okay, whether they may be parents, students, teachers, or other stakeholders, we our whole total process of education is running to achievement for the achievement of the learning outcomes. Okay, so that's why each and every one must aware about these learning outcomes. Okay, that's why now it is a rule that learning outcomes must be um, placed in the class. It must be written in the class so that every day the child must read the learning outcomes. Yes, 
today this chapter in mathematics or this chapter in economics or in geography has completed and after completion of this i must able to do all these things so that the child must be aware about it and uh, every everyone must be aware about it okay but when we are writing learning objectives we are not telling all these things so that is the difference what we are talking regarding learning objectives and learning outcome so that lack to uh, we will tell it from uh, objective point of view learning outcome is also objective and learning objectives are also objective no more difference is there but now we want to make it more sensitized and we want to plan everything on the basis of it and we want to create more awareness about it regarding this elements and these elements are now sometimes when we are write, going to write learning objectives we are not giving more importance on behavioral aspect but at the time of writing the learning outcomes we give the we want to write the learning out of outcomes in such a way that it must be um, it must be measurable in terms of the behavior okay so learning how we we write the learning our objectives or learning outcomes for that also specific rules are there so how we will write we we have to write always those in the form of a, in, in the statement format so if format spelling become wrong here format okay statement not format it is format uh, the spelling is l as a wrongly printed here okay so statement format okay next statement format means you can understand it must be a written in such a way that it must not be in the form of question it not must not be in the form of exclamatory sentence it must not be a negative sentence it must be in a statement format so that easily it can be understandable okay it must be simple 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 means at the time of writing learning outcomes we should not take the use of ornamental language we should use the simple vocabulary we should use the simple vocabulary so that it can be easily understandable by the student it can be easily understandable by the teachers and also all others whoever will be able to understand it easily so that's why we should take the use of the simple vocabulary and it will be more it will be short it should not be very lengthy complicated complex it should be small and simple okay precise it should be small and precise okay and next what we i already told to you it must be based on certain domains we should write the learning outcomes in such a way that we must able to identify whether it is related to knowledge cognitive domain or it is related to affective domain or it is related to psychomotor domain or it is the application level we must able to identify so it must be based on domains next we will write the learning objectives in such a way that it must be measurable measurable means we must be able to i already told to you what are the learning outcomes we are going to write uh, at last again we want to measure it whether it can be in, uh, achieved by our student or not for that we are going to measure it so that if we will write the term objectives in such a way at a time of measuring it cannot be possible so it cannot be called as a learning objective for learning outcome so we must think that at the time of writing the learning outcome so we write in such a way that it can be measurable okay so or it must be it or sometimes by being over ambitious we can write in such a way that uh, suppose take example we are just going to teach about uh, a particular topic but we are expecting some more help from our students we are just uh, explaining regarding the aeroplane what are the different parts of the aeroplane but i will write my learning ob objectives after knowing after completion of this lesson my students will able to able to um, get the all the different skills of preparing aeroplane it cannot be possible okay so it is a uh, just we can say it is not a realistic objective so we will we can say that we will write the objectives in such a way that it can be realistic it can be realistic really it can be possible by the student or we can say really it can be achievable by the students so that it can be a good learning objective or good learning outcome so we must give importance on these things when we are going to write the objective it must be measurable 
like it must be based on content it must be based on, it must be based on content based on content means sometimes you are teaching something else and writing the objective in some other thing else if there is no relation between your teaching content and your objective then is also it is not a objective because whatever the things i am going to teach out of it only i have to write the objective okay i am teaching something and writing objective in something else so it is not a objective or it is not a learning outcome so objectives and learning outcomes must be related to the content and we can say it is simple it is measurable it must be achievable and it must be based on domains it must be precise and it must be in a statement format so these are the skill of writing a objective okay so these are the very important skills uh, of a lesson plan what we have discussed regarding micro skills and skill of questions and skill of objective now we will come more to discuss the content part what is there in your blog regarding different units briefly just we will i will discuss all this content and later if you have any doubt you can ask okay so um, uh, your unit unit uh, 17 and unit 18 is about the geography and here the importance is given regarding the indian physical features and um, uh, your the different physical features of india and unit uh, next unit is about unit uh, 15 is about the resources okay what are the resources are available, available? 14 and 15 is regarding geography and 16 and 17 is regarding the economics so 15 uh, uh, 14 is regarding the physical features and the different type of vegetation drainage system in india types of forest in india and concentration of natural resource and, and wildlife in india and all these things and unit 15 is about the different type of resources what are the different type of resources are available in india and how we can take the best use of the resources so unit 14 already we have briefly touched okay and now we will discuss regarding the unit 15 which is about the resources resources you know what is called as the resource source which can be used again and again for the use of us so we can say it is a resource okay and uh, unit 15 Uh, we have the different type of resource here they have mentioned not only resource means the material resource resource your knowledge also can be a resource your skill can be a resource for here we can say for a teacher the in the knowledge is a resource your mastery over the teaching skill is a resource okay so like that resource means not only mostly we can say uh, uh, from the geographic in geography in geography point of view we can say the material resource is a resource suppose minerals are the resource forest is a resource land is a resource water is a water is a resource air is a resource okay and human being are the resource like that if human being is a resource within a human being also your intellectual ability is the resource your reasoning capacity is the resource and your skill are the your resource so like that many resources are there by help of which we can take uh, we can we can take the best utilize of this resource so that we, our life can be more smooth okay and these all the things are emphasized in this unit so that how we can address all these topics to the students at the secondary stage and how we can what about till now we have discussed what are the learning outcomes what are the learning objectives and how we can frame questions on the basis of it and here they have given importance on different type of resource and service okay mostly materials means we understand the good good and material but sometimes we are unaware regarding the service and service uh, what what are the different type of service can be uh, can be by taking the use of the resource okay so those things are also mentioned here so um, we have to if you will read all these things and you will ask the doubts again we will go to the depth otherwise we can't explain each and everything okay 
here what is a potential resource what is a developed resource how uh, uh, this resource how we can differentiate between a potential resource and developed resource what is a renewable resource non renewable resource biotic resource a biotic resource all these things regarding all these as a geography teacher how you how you must have the clear understanding of it okay so these all the things are mentioned in unit 15 and on the basis of it how you can prepare the resources and uh, i don't think so we will go in detail so that because many things it is there in your material and i i think we will come to the next unit unit 16 Unit 16, which is about Unit 16 and Unit 17, is about the economics. Okay, and different economic issues are mentioned here. Different economic issues is uh, at the time of discussing the economics. Also, I told to you, uh, main purpose of teaching economics is to create awareness among our students regarding the economic problems and economic issues. And most of the economic issues and problems which is highlighted in the economics syllabus. at the secondary stage is like poverty poverty is a main economic problem in india like country okay so uh, or the we can say lack of utilization of resource is also one of the one of the main economic problem in india we have many resources we are blessed with many resources but till now we are unable to know how we can take the utilize of our resources suppose you take example our human resource we have a lot of population in india but we till now are unable to create the skilled human being okay our education system or our uh, development or our industrialization process or we can say our professional education field are not that much efficient enough to create the skilled human beings we have only a number a lot of human beings in india but we do not know how to take the best use of the human resource for the development of a country so that is the main economic problem in our country okay human resource is there but we do not know how to take the best use of the human beings and how we do not know how to create the skilled human beings because no skilled human beings are born okay every human being is born as like that only but it is depends on the society our education system we can make our human humans more skilled now Okay. so that is the main economic problem in our country like poverty poverty we you know poverty is a vicious cycle poverty create poverty it means who are poor from generation to generation they are becoming poor who are rich from generation to generation they are becoming rich so we can say poverty in our country in the country like india it is a vicious cycle it is moving like a circle i am poor because i born in a poor family okay it, it means that there is no chance of out of coming of poverty in india see so for that purpose also we our uh, social issues our uh, social problems are responsible for it so how we can overcome all these concepts so in that also we have a different a, a lot of thinking about it as a teacher and also we should ask all these to to create the um thought provocating questions are by preparing all the thought provocating questions we can create all the thoughts in our students okay so that uh, we can able to make some uh, um, discover we will able to make some inventions so these all are the social issues social problems economic issues economic problems how we will deal in the class when we are going to teach at the secondary level these all the things whatever we are going to talk these all are at the secondary level at the class 9th and 10th and we know in the class 9th and 10th already problem solving ability and reasoning ability is developed enough among the children so that they can able to deal with these issues okay so these are the, the different um, things are given and next one more important uh, topic is mentioned in your material and the same unit unit 6 regarding the globalization and globalization is also a major economic issue in our country because uh, we will see it will see for the globalization before independence we have given importance on globalization and for that purpose colonialization has developed in our country and we 
different colonies established in india and after that we lost our independence okay and due to that um, suppose we will see that in the 14th century and at, at a time of teaching all these topics we can interlink also to economics we can interlink to history yes suppose what now i am going to tell globalization if you will see globalization we indians are able to understand it what is the importance of globalization from the uh, historical time from the 14th century onwards we have given importance we have given permission to the portuguese to dutch to french and also to britishers to come to our country and to invest in our country and also to start colonies but the thing is that instead of that the colonialism or colonization has started in india and at that time they not only they uh, interference was there in the field of industries and also in in trading but they interfere in the internal matter of india and they interfere in our administration and at last we indians are we become more helpless and we lost our independence okay but later when in the next after independence when the globalization has started throughout the world at that time due to of all this fear we never encouraged the globalization in our country okay after 1947 and also india never encouraged globalization and never have given importance on globalization and do not want to get more benefit out of globalization after independence after freedom our independence 1947 but later again in 1991 okay at that time again we realized what is the importance of globalization how we can get benefit and how economically we will grow due to of globalization and after that again india declared as a globalized country in 1991 In 1991, then we have given more importance on globalization. After that, more MNCs, multinational corporations, have started uh, establishing their industries in India, and we got more foreign direct investments, FDIs, in India, and our capital. We got more capital for investment. So in this way, industrialization has grown up, and we give interest for the development of industrialization. and many foreign companies started their um, uh, um, industries in our country and also due to of that we our unemployment problem has solved to some extent and we got more capital so like that the globe after globalization in 1991 many of our economic issues are also solved economic problems are also solved and we got the the benefit out of it so these all are the economic things or economic issues what is mentioned in this unit and you have to go through the in depth reading of those units okay next if you will come the, it is there the, the given importance on the sustainable development because we know development and growth are the two different aspects okay uh, i think you must be able to understand what is growth and what is development if you will say growth growth is nothing but a quantitative term okay if anything is going to move grow so if it going to increase in terms of quantity then only we can say it is a economic growth but development is something different than the growth okay development is a quantitative term growth is a quantitative term and development is a quantitative uh, sorry, sorry qualitative term it is a growth is a quantitative term and development is a qualitative term suppose here i will give example if someone's income increased suppose your, your salary has increased before you used to get some amount and now the amount only increased you are getting some more amount okay there is the uh, change in your salary or in your salary is increased then that will be only the growth that cannot be called as development increase in salary is only a example of growth but if you are able to make the best use of your increased salary and due to of which there is change in your living style or standard of living then only we can say that is the real development i think all of you can understand suppose my salary is increased but before how i used to live now also i am used uh, living like that then it cannot be called as a economic development for the country also like that If in a country only the per capita income will increase, then it can be called as 
growth. But due to change in per capita income, if there is change in the index of living of the people, or in a country there is change in the literacy rate, there is change in the life ex expectancy, there is change in urbanization, and due to increase in income, there is change in industrialization, or there is change in more innovation. Due to increase in per capita income, the country is going to innovate more new and new things, and there is a more development in industrial sector. Then only we can say it is the development. Okay, if it is a personal problem, personal issue, or an issue of a nation, if anything is change in terms of the quality, then only we can say it is the real development. And these things are also mentioned in this unit. Unit so that you can understand in depth what is growth, what is sustainable growth. What is sustainable development? How we can get the real development by taking the best use of the resources we are having? Because already I told to you, India is a, a such a country which is blessed with all type of natural resources. Natural resources. We have all type of natural resources. Till now we are able to explore it. We are not able to explore. We have. We do not know. But more other materials are also there with us. Okay, we we are unable to explore it. How we know how to take the best use of it? Okay, it's like that. That we have more human beings. Human resource is the biggest resource for a nation. Okay, human resource is the biggest resource for a nation. We have many human resource, but we know do not know how to take the best use of this resource. Okay, so like that, these all are the main economic problems, economic issues. How we can understand it and how we can know what the how we can take the best use of it. Okay, so these are the different issues are there. And next last unit is about economic institutions. Uh, how uh, the the functioning of the government, how a bank is going to function, how the different type of tax is government going to impose, how the government is going to collect the revenue. And how by imposing the direct and indirect tax, tax system, some the information is there regarding the tax system. How these uh, concepts we can teach in the class. How we can frame the objectives on that. What are the learning activities can be conducted in these topics? These all the things are there in your last unit. Like that income uh, tax system. Tax system is just briefly I will tell to you regarding the tax system. Tax system, you know, we have the two types of tax. Direct tax and indirect tax. The tax, the which is government is going to collect from the people directly. That is called as the direct tax. And there are some other tax. We are paying to the government, but we are unknown about it. We are paying to the government, but unknowingly we are paying many tax to our government. A common man also is paying a number of tax to the government unknowingly, and those are called as the indirect tax. Suppose, for example. Direct tax example, income tax is a direct tax. Okay. Government is imposing tax on the income of the people. Government is going to fix a range, and if your income is above that particular range, a particular percentage of your income has to give as a tax to the government. Then it is called as the income tax. Like the government is going to impose the wealth tax. Government is going to impose the gift tax. Government is going to import um, the custom duty and the import and export. The government is going to impose the tax. Okay. Now, in a different production, in the industrial production goods, the government is going to tax. That is an example of the indirect tax. Okay. Whenever we are going to purchase a pen, in the with the cost of the pen also we are paying a tax to the government, and that is called as the indirect tax. Okay. Excise duty is one of the example of the. Indirect tax, like value added tax. Now, value added tax is the indirect tax. At the time of uh, evolving, uh, enjoying a service, also we are paying to the tax to the government. Okay, suppose you went to a restaurant for a good meal. At the time also, for the service of the people, you are paying the tax. Okay, for the service also we are paying the tax, and in terms of your recipes. So that is uh, that. That is also a indirect tax. So, like that, different type of tax are there. And as an economic teacher, you must have enough knowledge regarding the tax system, and you must know how you can organize the different learning activities on the basis of these contents. Okay. So, this is the overall uh, contents. What is there in your unit? Um, 
regarding geography and economics just briefly i have touched all those things and uh, how we can plan the learning activities on the all these contents and how we can write the objectives on it how we can prepare the questions on it okay so with this because no more things are there to present but at the time of discussion if you will ask more questions then we can go for the more discussion okay so with this i think i will stop my presentation here now you can ask any question from all not only this block today is the last class if you want you can ask any question from any of, of your block block 1 2 3 4 If you have any doubt, we will discuss it. Great. Thank you very much, Madam. Madam, am I audible to you? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I think I think uh, the presentation is over. Yes, sir. Now, now it is time for. now it is time for question answer so all the students are requested to please put up your question uh, if there is any either through the chat box or directly through your microphone hello ma'am yes ma'am what is sustainable development sustainable development what what sustainable sustainable development, development. Sustainable development. Have you gone through your material? Sustainable development. No, ma'am. Ah? Huh? No, ma'am. No. Okay. <laughs> Sustainable development. It is also one of the topic uh, you will see in geography and also in science. Development by giving importance on all aspects. Suppose you see, only we will grow economically. and uh, our development our resources will be exploited then it can be called as a sustainable development okay mm -hmm. development in all aspects by giving consideration of all the uh, aspects properly then we suppose you say we will grow industrially but we, there will be more environmental pollution in our country then it can not cannot be called as a development okay we will grow industrially but with that also environmental pollution must be in control okay our human development the suppose a country is growing materially material development is there but human development is not there a, a country is growing in terms of the wealth and in terms of the income but there is no development of human beings human or illiterate human beings are there there is no health of the human beings then also it cannot be called as the proper development sustainable development means development in all sector by maintaining balance we can say it is a sustainable development okay ma'am thank you oh, okay any more question any other question Sikhara is asking. Yes. What is the gesture and posture skill? Give an example. Yes, yes. Uh, gesture and posture skill definitely it is also very important skill a teacher has to master over it. It means your dressing style when you are entering to a class. What you must wear in your what must be your dress code? Okay, that is one of the part of your gesture and posture. Another thing. how you will stand in the class what must be your standing posture in the class okay sometimes you will see teacher will sit in the chair and will be in a comfortable place and will teach at that time teaching will never will be effective suppose you can see there must be a sofa in the classroom is it there must be a sofa for the teacher in the classroom the teacher will sit in the sofa and will teach is it the correct posture of teaching for a teacher no definitely at the time of teaching a teacher has to stand and if you are standing and teaching you definitely your teaching will be effective so how you will stand in a class what will be your dress code and what will be your facial expression suppose you tell you are just standing uh, in a particular place and there is no facial movement and there is no hand movement just you are speaking something by looking to the walls and there is no eye contact with your students and you are teaching just As you know something, and you are teaching something to your students. 
so the entire time also your teaching will be never effective okay so all the things a teacher has to learn and has to be conscious about it okay at the time of teaching and at the time of in front of your children because you know children learn very less by listening and they learn a lot by observing because you know for us our visual sense is more powerful than our listening whatever we will see we will learn it quickly than listening okay so how you will be your everything that students are going to observe what how you are talking how you are writing how you are standing what is your facial expression at the time of talking and what is your hand movement and you know at the time of teaching some teachers will frequently move from front to back it will also create a um, um, confusion in the mind of the child why the teacher is moving in such a speed okay so for that everything there is something must be smoother and also everything must be uh, beauty in every in your standing posture in your talking in everything there is a beauty and that sense of the beauty must be there in your posture and gesture so that your teaching style will be present that is the gesture and posture skill there is uh, another question by mudini manan she yes, asking sir? writing skill comes under which domain writing skill comes under the psychomotor domain writing skill because you know writing is something related to our finger if our finger motor ability is not developed a child cannot write for writing a child's finger must be developed first of all the motor ability in the finger must be developed that's why after a particular age only we should practice the writing by the children now the you say a playful child must not write because till now the fingers are not strong enough to hold the pencil okay so after class and sometimes uh, up to a particular age they must write in pencil and after that only they move for the pen so for that also there is a, some scientific reason is there why the child will write up to a particular age in the pencil how after pen because uh, on the basis of the development of motor ability of the finger okay and for that purpose we can say writing is a motor ability and it is related to skill writing is a skill okay it is related to approach and method I think it was responded in the previous class also. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Previous class I ex explain about it. Approach and method. Approach is a broad concept under which we are going to take the use of the different methods. Okay. Many methods will come under one approach. Hello, uh, ma'am. Actually, uh, Simon, Simon, madam, uh, you know it is required by Simon and Mishra. Yes. Find the uh, you know find your PPTs. Do yes, sir. Today I will send all the PPTs. Today I will send all the PPTs to the assignation mail, sir. Yes. Sir. All Please four, uh, all four blocks yes. of PPTs. Today I will send to the mail, sir. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Ma'am, namaste. Yes. लेसन प्लान इंट्रोडक्शन विभिन्न स्टेप्स हाउ टू इंट्रोड्यूस योरसेल्फ योर योर कंटेंट 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 सिलेक्ट सिलेक्ट कंटेंट कंटेंट जो जो प्रेस्क्राइब सिलेक्ट करेंट तो से समय तुम निश्चय सिलेक्ट करियो मोर दो तरह मास्टरी अछि मु सेटा पढेबी मते जोडा भल्ला जना मु सेटा पढेबी किंतु ए जे सब्जेक्ट टीचर त हमरा किछ ऑप्शन नै हमें किछ सिलेक्ट करि परिबेनी हमर टेक्स्ट बुक रे जहां प्रेस्क्राइब हे छि आरंभ रो शेष जाय हमें तहा पढेबी हां मैम मैम प्लीज पीपीटी उडा कटिके शेयर करियो निश्चय निश्चय हां मु पीपीटी उडा मेल के पठाइ देबी हां मैम
Yes, portfolio is a self-assessment tool. Portfolio and rubric are nothing else. These all are the self-assessment tool. It means a child can assess himself and herself on the basis of specific criteria. Okay, rubric and portfolio nowadays in assessment process, we are going to take the use of it. And it is that, suppose take example, I will prepare a portfolio on the basis of the writing style of a child. I am going to develop a portfolio for the first time. I am going to develop a portfolio for the first time. For example, I am going to develop a writing for the first time. I am going to develop a portfolio for the first time. So, I am going to write a portfolio for the first time. I am going to write a portfolio for the first time. But, I am going to write a portfolio for the first time. I am going to write a portfolio for the first time. I am going to write a portfolio for the first time. पिल्ला मुझे तारे ब्रांड करी हो जैसे ये कहते हैं मार्क पाइवा डॉक्टर कोस चप्पल में लिखी है जब ये राइटिंग रहे जब ये राइटिंग रहे सेंटेंस स्ट्रेट अच्छी ताहले रुके ना रुके मार्क पाइवा हो जी बे सेंटेंस भी तेरे प्रॉपर गैप अच्छी ताहले रुके मार्क पाइवा हो सिमिलर क्या अच्छी रुके मार्क पाइ नक्शे तने कोने अभी तक की पर्टिकुलर वर्ड भी तेरे एकता स्पेस आ सोची तारे सही भी नहीं हमरे गुटे मार्क रही बो हैंडराइटिंग रहा साइज़ जो नु सरे बट सिमिलर हैंडराइटिंग सब बोले वो भी बड़ा साना है नी सिक्स हैंडराइटिंग ले कुछ सही भी नहीं पर्टे मार्क रही बो तो आपने कोई तरह जस स्पेलिंग मिस्टेक तो अम्मे सही क्राइटेरिया अनुसार वो तो पोर्टफोलियो तैयारी करेगा। तो पोर्टफोलियो तैयारी करी क्या हमें पिल्लां को देले, पिल्ला निजे निजे से तार इवालुएट करते हैं वो जो मतलब दस मार्क रूप कितने मार्क मिले करी हो। दिस ऑल आर द सेल्फ इवालुएटिंग टूल, पोर्टफोलियो रियुब्रिक, दिस ऑल आर द सेल्फ by use of portfolio and rubric. Okay? Bujji Pallo, kye pachari thila Bujji Pallo? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. It's okay. Any more question? How can I ask you a question? Ma'am, uh, what is the best method of teaching geography? Uh, I already told you, nothing best is there like that. Okay, Best nothing is there. Many methods are there. And one method cannot be best for all topics. Which can be best for a particular topic, it may not be best for another topic. Okay, nothing best method is there. But already I told you what are the popular methods in geography. I mean, geography could have been popularly used for which I have already called it our indirect observation method, direct observation method, or we can say lecture come discussion method. I mean, the lecture come discussion may be for which I have multiple methods in it. Observation come discussion. Indirect observation come discussion method. We have to call it. कि मैंने कल एक प्रोजेक्ट मेथड भी हमें वर्तमान पिलांग को देखी जियोग्राफिकल इश्यूज़ बुढ़ा को इकोनॉमिक इश्यूज़ बुढ़ा को ये आजकल ही भल्ला हमें पढ़े ही भरुचे बाय हेल्प ऑफ़ द प्रोजेक्ट मेथड तो इनमें भी बहुत बुढ़ा मेथड है जिसमें बेस्ट मेथड वाली संति किसी ना तो मेथड का बेस्ट हमें संति तो सब तो उसे टॉपिक को अच्छे के रखेगी। तो टॉपिक का केमिस्ट्री पढ़े ले स्वीट है वो ताऊ परे ताऊ परे डिपेंड करें। तो वो टॉप मैं मैंने जो कंटेंट टा कौन हो जी? वो कंटेंट टा केमिस्ट्री हो जी। ताकि दूरी का मैं मेथड चूज करी बरा। हेलो मैम। हाँ। मैम स्किल बेस्ड एंड कॉम्प्लिकेट एप्लीकेशन बेस्ड क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज स्किल बेस्ड एंड एप्लीकेशन बेस्ड क्वेश्चन स्किल स्किल इज रिलेटेड टू साइकोमोटर डोमेन है ना स्किल मैंने जब जब ड्रॉ कर दी पढ़ थी वो 
किंवा किती गोटे काम करीपुर मोटर एबिलिटी युज करी काम करीपुर आम सेटा कहला स्किल कि आप्लिकेसन हूँ जोटा कि से तार नर्माल लाइफ रे डे टू डे लाइफ रे कि अलग सिचुएसन से नलेज टाक एप्लाय कर मन कर सपोज आम ए प्लस ए प्लस बी रोल स्कोर पे पढ़े जाऊ फर्मूला किंतु फर्दर से फिजिक्स पढ़ला बेले भी तार फर्मूला आसे से कौटी से एप्लाय कर सल्व कर पार जान जोग्राफी पढ़े पिला तार जोग्राफी मानते लर्णिंग टाक भी अलग कंटेक्स यूज कर टीचर फैसिलिटेटर सेंटेंस, सेंटेंस 
तो एमिति जदी समडा को सैनिटाइजर ऑलरेडी किए दी छे अवेलेबल अछि हम यूज करू छी है ना सेमिति जदी हम हम ज्योग्राफी इकोनॉमिक्स हायर क्लास रे जतले हम पढौ छे ता उपर भी जदी हम गेम डेवलप करि परिबा ताहाले भी हम सडा को सिमुलेशन गेम गोटे मेथड जा को यूज करके हम गोटे टॉपिक को पिलाम दे पढै परिबा ओके हेलो आई थिंक मैम Please discuss very briefly Sir. on on uh, knowledge based question and understanding based question. Is there any kind difference between those type of questions? Ha yeah, ha! Yeah, definitely, difference is there between knowledge based question and understanding based question. Knowledge based question, जो तो रेकी, अमरो पिलरो कितने दूर बुझी चाहे हमें सेटा, हमें मेजर करिए कुछ चाहो नहीं, है ना? केवल knowledge level question पिलर कितने दूर मन्ने रखी पर्ची कोटे जिसका जोडा के हमें नॉलेज लेवल क्वेश्चन को छे किंतु अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज डिफरेंट देन नॉलेज बेरे वाले में बहुत कथा जानी छे किंतु काहे के हिचि हमें सेटा केबे जानी नै बुझो तो जदी सपोज जण को जण करो और नाम भी पचरा जो तुम नाम कोनो से नाम कहि परे व्हाट इज द व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ योर नेम प्रत्येक नाम भी बड अर्थ अछि बड अछि हमें जानी नै तो सेमिति बहुत जिंस ओनली फॉर मेमोरी हमें केवल इंफॉर्मेशन सेक रे बहुत जिंस मन्ने रखि छि देन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज नॉलेज बुझिन किंतु अंडरस्टैंडिंग माने जो भी कि वी आस्क टू आवर सेल्फ व्हाई हाउ दिस क्वेश्चंस वेयर अराइज देन इट इज रिलेटेड टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग काहे के एम थेला कोन के एम थे छि और बार इट इज नहीं पसंद के नहीं ए जिन सोडा के जते हमें क्वेश्चन अराइज हो छि दैट इज रिलेटेड टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग है ना तो सब जो भी हमें चाहु जे जेटा क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडेबल होला दरकार हमें सेटा अंडरस्टैंडिंग क्वेश्चन यूज करू छि गोटे जिनसो को एक्सप्लेन करबा विदाउट अंडरस्टैंडिंग गोटे पिलाटा के एक्सप्लेन कर परियो नाही गोटे दीटा जिनसो भितरे डिफरेंशिएशन करबा पार्थक्य दर्शाइबा अंडरस्टैंडिंग नथिले केबे में डिफरेंशिएट करि परियो नाही गोटे जिनसो को एलैबोरेट करबा कंपेयर करबा तो ए जिनसो गोटा का पेन डेफिनेटली अंडरस्टैंडिंग दरकार एंड दैट इज डिफरेंस देन नॉलेज नॉलेज होची केवल अ कलेक्शन ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन आमी जानु छै गोटा केवल इंफॉर्मेशन सेकंड जोडा मन रखि छै ओके ओके थैंक यू मैम हेलो मैम यस व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स अ सेम थिंग टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स वी आर यूजिंग बट द सेम थिंग सर दे गिव मैम वन एग्जांपल टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स आर फॉर इवैल्यूएशन जस्ट आई एम गोइंग टू टेल सपोज यू हैव मेनी टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स आर देयर फॉर इवैल्यूएटिंग द स्टूडेंट्स है ना ये दैन कॉल अ क्वेश्चन पेपर इज अ टूल ओके question paper is a tool or we can say rating scale is a tool or we can say checklist is a tool sociometric technique is a but here we are using technique okay sociometric technique is a tool also for evaluation so these vocabulary we are using some there tool and technique but i think not so so much difference is there between tool and technique okay ma'am मैडम एप्लीकेशन बेस्ड क्वेश्चन पाए को माने एक्शन वर्ड गुडा को व्यवहार करा जे एप्लीकेशन करे हमें यूज कर पर जे आइडेंटिफाई आइडेंटिफाई माने बहुत गुडा हमें रॉन्ग जिंस अभी करे हमें गुडा करेक्ट करेक्ट जिंस रे गुडा रॉन्ग जिंस तो छे गुडा भूल अछि बाहर माने बाहर करो से हमें कहि परबे दैट इज एप्लीकेशन लेवल क्वेश्चन है ना तापर हमें कहि परबे लोकेट जदी हमें ज्योग्राफी पढौ छे हमें जदी लोकेशन लोकेट करे रु कहले माने मु पचरली द डेटन प्लेट इज लोकेटेड वेयर यू आइडेंटिफाई है ना सेटा होच एप्लीकेशन लेवल क्वेश्चन है ना लोकेट आइडेंटिफाई और यूटिलाइज ओडे कॉन्टेक्स्ट देबा सेट तमे त किमे व्यवहार करियो पचरिबा है ना सेटा को हम कहले एप्लीकेशन लेवल यस ए एक्शन वर्ड का हम यूज कर परिबा आउ कहरे किछ डाउट हेलो हां मैम प्लीज डिस्कस अबाउट पेडागॉजी पेडागॉजिकल टूल कोन कोन पेडागॉजिकल टूल पेडागॉजिकल 
टूल टूल बेटा टूल माने तो हम जानि ले जे गोटे माध्यम हो जोटा कि गा द्वारा हम गोटे काम दे करू छी टूल हैला तेटा कोची माने रिलेटेड टू चाइल्ड साइकोलॉजी पिलान करो साइकोलॉजी को आख्या के रखी के हम जो माध्यम किछि व्यवहार करू छी तो कहला पेडागॉजिकल टूल मैम से खूब भल लगे हेलो मैडम हेलो यस यस मैडम मैडम के असाइनमेंट का क्वेश्चन दे छी हेलो हां हां को दे सिलेक्टेड टॉपिक ऑफ योर चॉइस फ्रॉम सेकेंडरी स्कूल सोशल साइंस करिकुलम हेलो हां प्रिपेयर लेसन प्रिपेयर लेसन प्लान ऑन द यस टॉपिक यूजिंग कंस्ट्रक्टिविटी अप्रोच रह के मित्र यस कंस्ट्रक्टिविस्ट अप्रोच माने 5b मॉडल अप्रोच रे तमे सेकेंडरी स्टेज रो 9th 10th रो जे कोनोसी गोटे सब्जेक्ट ज्योग्राफी पॉलिटिकल साइंस इकोनॉमिक्स किबा सिविक्स या बिसरी हिस्ट्री जहा भी जे कोनोसी गोटे टॉपिक नबो सिलेक्ट करियो ता उपर 5b मॉडल रे गोटे लेसन प्लान करियो 5b मॉडल रे लेसन प्लान जदी केमिति होच त हम देखियो हो चाहौ चो ऑलरेडी हम स्टडी मटेरियल रे बहुत नाइसली प्रेजेंट करा आई छी तमे देखिबो हिस्ट्री रे गोटे अछि ज्योग्राफी रे भी गोटे अछि तमे सेटा को देखो देखि सला पर तमे जानि परिबो हैना तमे एंगेज स्टेज रे कोन करिया दरकार तापर एक्सप्लोर पे कोन करिया दरकार तापर केमिति एक्टिविटी उडा तो करिके तमे एक्सप्लेन और एलैबोरेट करि परिबो लेवल क्वेश्चन करि परिबो जस्ट तमे तमरो जरे एग्जांपल रे जोडा जोडा दिया है छि तमे सेटा पढो देखो बहुत बोला रे कर परिबो I think there is no other question. I'll try to correct it. If you have a question, okay. Ma'am, fundamental rights. Study the level. I am a 5B model. Ah. Uh, तो आंगु माने what is right? एक क्वेश्चन है मैं कोना तो को माने फंडामेंटल राइट्स पढ़ी हमने डायरेक्ट पच्चर को नहीं कौन फंडामेंटल राइट्स हो ची क्या ना पिल्ला जाने ना जाने फंडामेंटल राइट्स भी सर पढ़े हुए जाओ ची तो मैं तुमको प्रथम एक और एक तो मैं कौन होगा तो चाहूँ जाओ मैंने पच्चर लो सबसे बड़े क्वेश्चन एंगेज स्टेज रे है ना तो मैं किए कौन होगा तो चाहूँ जो बड़े बने बड़े एक्टिविटी कंडक्ट कर ले एंगेज कर जाते तो मैं सेट को ड्राइंग करके देखा किए डॉक्टर होगा तो चाहूँ जो किए इंजीनियर होगा तो चाहूँ जो कि कौन होगा तो चाहूँ जो ताहले तो मैं तुम्हें सेट पच्चर करो आमे जा चाहूँ ता है तेरी बा� हाँ हे पे कहीं ना आम डेमोक्रेटिक कंट्री रे रोचे आमर रईट्स अच्छे बिकज रईट टू एजुकेशन एंड रईट टू एडप्ट एनी प्रोफेसन आम फंडामेंटाल रईट आम कर एक्टिविटी कर कंडक्ट कर एंगेज करोर कर टपिक को एनाउंस कर फंडामेटाल रईट विषय पढ़ाक जाऊँगी बुझल हेलो मैम यस मैम व्हाट इज थीमेटिक अप्रोच थीमेटिक अप्रोच माने एना आमे एमिति गुटे अप्रोच यूज करजे जो तक हम मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट देते थीम ऑफ द टॉपिक काईना प्रत्येक टॉपिक रे गुटे पर्टिकुलर थीम अछि थीम माने बुझि परछो विषय आ सेटा होछ तमर सेंटर ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन जो हम थीम को बेसी एम्फसिस करिके हम प्रेजेंटेशन करिजे तब हम कहू जे थीमेटिक अप्रोच हमें सेठ है इंटरडिसिप्लिनरी करूने अलग सब्जेक्ट को इंटरलिंक करूने किंतु हमें सेम थीम तो कोई ना अधिक एम्फासाइज कर चुके
डाउट If if there is no other question, uh, we should wind up, madam. Yes, sir. Uh, there was some problem in my you know connectivity. Therefore, you know yes, I had sir. to log in again in my desktop. So it's all okay, right. Okay. So uh, thank you very much, madam, for your nice presentation and responding to okay, each and every. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Responding to each and every questions put up by the students, and. Uh, today's session is indeed a good session uh, full of uh, new information new knowledge based on teaching social sciences and uh, the students have also they have put they have, they have put many questions and those questions have been properly responded and uh, i think uh, the students are satisfied with uh, the kind of presentation that was made today in this open platform so students thank you very much for your active participation and uh, madam i also thank you very much for your nice presentation so thank you sir for providing the scope to be with you and uh, with the students here yes thank you thank you and i think i think today is the uh, you know end of uh, bs 142 isn't it yes yes sir okay so it's all right so we will be getting many more opportunities like this where okay, we'll sir, thank you. once again and okay, uh, talk about uh, different other topics uh, based on different uh, courses of bet so till okay. such time thank you very much and thank you sir thank you sir very much no, thank you thank you thank you very much students we'll be again meeting tomorrow with a with a new subject thank you sir bet is 143 thank you very much thank you sir thank you madam thanks both of you sir thank you thank you sir Thank <laughs> you.